Hello everybody. I attempted to say short video, but by the time I get finished, they're usually fairly long. Can't get me to shut up. What we're looking at here is on my hazelnut tree. I have three of these trees. This one is by far the largest. And that is hazelnut starting to form. That particular cluster has got one, two, three, four, I guess, four. A lot of the clusters that I look at have got four hazelnuts on them. And I don't know how many clusters there are. Um, I did a thing, and I can never remember what it's called. And I'm sure Woody's probably watching this. <laughs> Woody Allotment Channel in England told me last year to, I think he said in September, um, he, I'll show you this branch here, I guess that's in focus, he goes around his hazelnuts and you just bend the twig like that on the end of not all of the branches but quite a few of the branches and that will cause the tree to produce more male catkins which was my problem in the past uh, I have lots of female blossoms a tiny 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 little pinkish red blossom which you really have to look hard to find uh, and I always got some catkins but here if the winter is cold enough a lot of the catkins get killed in the winter and they just don't open up well, I did that last August, and the tree produced, and both the larger trees here produced an amazing amount of catkins. And I lost some of them over winter, but the majority of them opened up. So the tree is so dense, I have no idea how many clusters, but everywhere I look, I see another cluster. So if I don't have a, a squirrel attack that gets them all, I'm going to have some hazelnuts this fall. Well, the corn that just had tassels beginning to show last week has now got the tassels really opening up. They're not distributing pollen yet because the corn cobs aren't ready, but I'll show you in a second that the corn cobs have started. But what I want to show and brag about is the corn that I started uh, in the house and had in the hoop house for a while before I transplanted it has reached the top of the cage. And as you can probably see there, the other corn behind it is about half that height. And that's the corn that I planted from seed. Uh, direct seed sown, rather they were all started from seeds, but direct seed sown in the ground for like a rotation crop. And don't know if I'll actually get that, depends on how late our frost is this year, but I've got uh, tassels and corn that has reached the top of the cage anyway. You can see that leaf that is sort of coming out between one of the corn cob regular leaves and the stalk. I believe that's the start of the corn cob. Um, and most plants have two. I do see some that only have one, but I think two to three is pretty much average for a corn plant. But those are the corn cobs, I think, starting to come out. No sign of silt yet or the actual cob developing. Well, I'm going to do my first potato reveal of the season. And I won't know until I dump this exactly what's in here. It's either Cara or Charlotte, one or the other. When I went to get them out to plant them this spring, uh, they had grown those long white sprouts, so I planted them anyway. I put all of the Cara in one pot and all of the Charlottes in another pot. Several stems have already died. I'm not sure how many seed potatoes I had in there, five or six, probably tiny little things, but these final stalks aren't dead yet, but they're turning yellow and starting to die, so. Whatever's down there, I don't think is going to grow anymore if I leave it. So, uh, and I want some new potatoes. I'm sure they won't be won't be huge. Well, neither variety is a large potato. But I mean, I don't think the quantity would be anything too great. Well, I'm seeing these. These are Charlottes. Rotten seed potato there. Uh, I'm gonna put them, I'll just put them over here in this corner, I guess. If you hear horns in the background, if you can pick out a really weak one, that's the, the lighthouse. Oh, I don't know, five or six kilometers from here on the northern end of the island. And uh, the larger horn that you hear, the noisier one, Okay, this is getting me confused. Evidently, <laughs> evidently, I got a Charlotte and a and a carrot potato 
both in this pot because these are these are Kara's that I'm getting now. I can tell because of the the pink. Kara has the pink eyes on them, and the Charlotte is these nice little yellow ones. So, thought I only had one variety. I got two. Uh, it's a sunny morning here, no fog. I'm in the center of the island. Not that the island's that big. It's only four or five miles wide and about ten miles long. Um, but I'm in the center and there wasn't any fog. The fog didn't get in this far last night, but evidently on the coast there is fog this morning. There's a ship going up the channel between the two islands here, Campobello and, and Dare Island. And it's blowing its horn frequently to smaller fishing boats or whatever will will know that it's coming. We are in the middle of what qualifies for a heat wave here so I will stop complaining about no sunshine and start complaining about the heat. Those of you who live in areas where you get uh, 40 degrees and higher Celsius temperatures won't think this is very hot. Uh, yesterday it got up to 27. The problem here with heat when it gets up to 27 degrees or 30 degrees even being coastal uh, there's a lot of humidity so it was very humid and the thing they call the humidex index uh, I'm not quite sure how that's calculated but they take the relative humidity anyway and do something with that in the temperature and tell you what the temperature feels like. So yesterday it felt like 35 here. Even though it was 27. And it's supposed to be a hot one today. I'm doing this quite early in the morning, almost after 9 o'clock I guess. Um, so now the forecast is warning us these are tiny little potatoes but they'll taste good. The forecast is warning us of severe thunderstorm warning for this afternoon and this evening. Possibility of tornadoes. Possibility of heavy hail which could damage crops and whatever. And then you never know, I might get it here, but we I've never seen a tornado here. I've lived here all my life. However, with climate change and the way our weather patterns have changed, I guess it it pays to pay attention to these warnings anyway. One thing I do remember, Canada's chief meteorologist, scientist, uh, I remember seeing him interviewed on television. You see him interviewed several times a year, season change type thing, I guess. But uh, someone asked him about um, what to do in a thunder and lightning storm. He said, if you hear thunder, take cover. So it might sound like it's miles away, the next lightning bolt could be at your feet. I've always taken that to, to heart. I don't go out if it's threatening to thunder. But I don't say I don't want the thunder and lightning, but good heavy downpour would do my garden a lot of good. We've had a lot of cloudy weather, a lot of fog, but really since mid-June, no real rain. So we can, we can use some actual rain, I guess. I'm sure there's probably one or two little thingies in there somewhere that I haven't got, but... I'll go through it when I'm emptying the wheelbarrow, see if I can find anything extra. And that's not, like I said, I didn't, wasn't expecting a large haul. They haven't been in there long enough to develop, and for some reason, this particular, the only pot here that uh, has decided to die off. I don't know quite why. But I will weigh those, and uh, I'll put the weight on the screen when I when I put the video up. Still finding wee ones, but they will be very nice tonight with butter and parsley. Let's move on and do a little bit of harvesting, and I want to show you pollinating a squash plant. Okay, what you're looking at there is a female squash blossom. And it's on one of my plants that are supposed to be golden nugget uh, squash, which is a yellow variety of uh, buttercup squash. 
and I don't know what went wrong with that package of seeds. I think I got them from Vessies, but there's some strange things happening. This particular one, you can't see the little squash behind it, but the little squash behind it is very green, uh, like a green buttercup squash. And I thought, well, maybe they turn uh, yellow later on. But there's a plant next door to this I have to fertilize in a few minutes here that has a squash on it that's a different shape than this green one and is basically quite yellow. So, you do, you know. Also, one of the four plants in this bed has a runner on it that's now seven or eight feet long and they were supposed to be a bush type squash. So, <laughs> a lot of strange things happening on that one package of seeds. I've just taken a mayo blossom, peeled off all of the petals, and the part in the middle there has the pollen. You can tell the female blossom, as I said, because it has the small squash behind it. And I can just tell at a glance by looking at the, the organs, the male and the female. I've done it for so many years, but I always hand pollinate every morning. Squash blossoms open early in the morning. And the first thing I do before I have breakfast, if it's not a rainstorm, I take a walk around my garden and look for squash blossoms that need to be pollinated. It doesn't matter what variety you do as far as cross-pollination. The squash itself will be the same as the, you know, the plant was going to produce. Uh, if you save the seed from it, you'd have some kind of a hybrid. But uh, I don't save these seeds. They're not, they're not GMO, but they're not, they're not uh, open-pollinated heirloom varieties anyway. They are F1 hybrids to begin with, so... I don't save the seed because it's hard to see what you would get. But that is pollinating. I just rub that on the center of that flower and the bees don't have to come do their work. Bees may find it during the day and they, or they may not. But that is how I pollinate squash blossoms for people who have been asking. I remember I got people asking last year and I don't think I ever did do a video showing it. I'm sure anybody that's gardened for a while probably does it anyway. But. I like to make sure I get as many squash as possible so I hand pollinate. Here I go counting my chickens before the eggs hatch, and you're probably tired of looking at my rutabagas, turnips or swedes, whichever you want to call them, but I'm so impressed. I've never been able to grow them before, and I grew transplants, and of course they're in a bed that was well prepared last fall with lots of chicken manure, but the foliage is looking fantastic, and I see at the base of some of them, I can see where there is a small turnip starting to form. And here you don't harvest turnips until after there's been a hard frost, so sometime probably in October. So they've got from now to October to keep growing, so maybe I'll get something with some size to it. Um, if you can pick out the four um, Brussels sprout plants, they're sort of being overtaken at this point by the turnips, but I don't care. It's the turnip crop that I'm after. But the Brussels sprouts will grow taller, so I think they'll still be all right. They're, they're still surviving, and I water this patch every night to keep it going good, so the Brussels sprouts have been growing nicely too. Hopefully, I'm showing you the beginnings of a cauliflower. I have cauliflower that has just started to form its head, or curd, whatever you prefer to call it. That one's an oh, inch and a half, two inches across. I have company coming in two weeks. I'd like to think that uh, I'll have cauliflower already. The same thing with the broccoli plants. Tiny heads starting to form. Don't remember the variety of either one. I think I saved the seed packets inside, but very pleased with the way they've been growing. And I'm having very little uh, damage from the cabbage moth. I do see some holes in the leaves, and I have uh, a few times dusted it with with, uh, oh yeah, I can't think of Bacillus thermogensis, Bt. But uh, normally I would see a lot more damage, but I guess what I'm used to growing is cabbage. Maybe they're not so crazy about the other brassicas, or for some reason we don't have very many of them this year. I think that's the first female scallopini squash that I have seen, and I have, oh, probably more than 15 plants. There's only four in this bed, but there's another, I think, 13 in the other bed, so... I make 17 plants, I guess. I've had male blossoms, but I haven't seen a female blossom yet, and that one's not open today, but it may open tomorrow. Anxious to try those, and the instructions on the seed packet said um, that you harvest them two to three days after the blossom falls off for the best of the squash. So they'd be tiny little things. 
anxious to try them. I've never grown them before. This is a close-up look at the chickpeas. I'm not so sure I can show you or not, but they have started to bloom. And the blossom, yes, very much, I guess, does resemble a pea blossom. There is people that have grown them have told me not to expect a large crop. <laughs> There's one or two peas to a pod, evidently. Well, I want to do a little harvesting inside the hoop post, and then I'll shut this video down. I can't tell if there's condensation on the lens or not. It's so hot and humid in here. The, you might be looking at a blurry picture, but I wanted to show you the height that some of these have reached. That's a gardener's delight, and it's within five or six inches of hitting the top of the, of the hoop post in that area, which is probably close to six feet, I guess. But that's an, uh, an indeterminate variety. I'm not at all surprised. Once it reaches the very top, I will have to take the top off, I guess, to prevent it from falling over. But what I want to show you next is right here beside me, if I can get you swung around. Now those are a determinate variety. I think what we're looking at is Roma. It's one, I'm growing three of each, three determinants and three indeterminates. And they're almost as tall. And my problem being, uh, I didn't prune the determinant varieties at all. It's one of the recommended ways of getting more tomatoes off of them. They're supposed to be shorter and it's less problem for the sucker growth and whatever. Well, this has got branches going in all directions with lots of little tomatoes forming. I'm afraid some of them are going to break up under the weight because I, there's no way of getting them all on the, the same wire that I was training the main stem to. But, for some strange reason, my determinants are almost as tall as my indeterminants. This is my best truss of tomatoes so far. Uh, they're about full size, or the top ones are, maybe a bit larger. I've never grown them before. It's that variety called Black Vernissage. You can see the striping on there. It's supposed to be, when ripe, a dark blackish purple color with green stripes. I don't know how much longer that's going to take. There are several trusses like that on the two plants of these that I'm growing. Black vernissage. Doing a little bit of harvesting for some things for this evening's dinner. And these are the Salanova lettuce. Just a mixture of different kinds of Salanova that I started in here really late winter. I've noticed that uh, one or two of them had started to bolt in the background, so I think it's time that I harvest them before I lose them. I love them. It's a nice, tender salad lettuce, very nice flavor. So that is one item for this evening's dinner. The, cucum whoops, the cucumbers are starting to produce, and I'm starting to try to save some. I want to make uh, dill, dill pickles. And a friend of mine has given me two of her pickle recipes, one for sour dills and one for a sweet dill pickle. Um, the only difference, I think the main difference is one has sugar and one doesn't. I want to try the sour variety. I like things sour. Uh, my dill is in bloom another week or two and it will be seed heads. And the cucumbers are starting to produce. That's a small one, but I, I only want them to be three or four inches long. And I need six pounds. so. I'm planning to collect them as they develop and store them in the refrigerator and uh, make the, the pickles once I have enough to do it. I had one of them that was much larger than that a couple of nights ago and they're very good in the salad as well but I'm trying now to save some for pickle making. I'm going to pull a couple of my beets. They're starting to get some size to them. I had a couple last week and they were delicious. This is the first time I've pulled one of the round, no, it's not a round one. Yes, it's supposed to be a round one. That should have been left longer, I guess, but it'll be nice and tender. It's not very big. And I'll take one of the cylinder ones, which are much bigger. Cylinder-shaped ones are growing better, I guess. But I like the greens as much as the beets, so I'll be enjoying beet greens with this evening's dinner. this time of year when you start to get fresh vegetables out of the garden. Wonderful. The bag has got the potatoes in it, which still haven't been weighed, but I will put it on the screen like I said I would. Salanova lettuce and five cucumbers. 
This Cool Breeze is the variety. Almost all, if not all, female blossoms, no pollination required, so they don't actually produce a seed. I've heard people say that, you know, the seedless cucumber still has a seed. Well, no. What you're looking at is what would have been a seed. It's the female zygote <laughs> in the center of the, of the, the fleshy part of, of the cucumber. It would have turned into a seed had the blossom been pollinated, but it's not a viable seed. It's just a very tender, fleshy little thing in the, in the center. These are, I guess I said, cool breeze as a variety. I don't think I've ever grown them before. They're quite spiny but that all comes off under the tap when you just rub them a little bit under cold water. And to go along with that, I have my two beets cleaned up. The Detroit Red, I can't remember the particular variety of the cylindrical ones, starting to bulb up, but if I'd left that for another week or two, I'd have had a, a nicer beet. That's all right, young and tender will be good for dinner this evening. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'll get this put together and get it up on YouTube. You can hear one of my roosters sending forth over at the coop.